From the rim of the Shackleton Crater to permanently shattered regions on the moon, a NASA-developed sensor suite could allow robotic and crewed missions to land precisely on the lunar surface, within half the distance of a football field. Technologies to enable exact and soft landings on the moon and other new worlds will fly on Blue Origin's next new Shepard suborbital rocket launch. The rocket's flight path is relevant to lunar landings, providing a unique opportunity to mature sensors and algorithms for potential use on Artemis missions. Jim Reuter, Associate Administrator for NASA's Space Technology Mission Directorate, STMD, says that this public-private partnership is a great example of NASA and industry working together on common goals to explore more of the moon and eventually land humans on Mars. STMD selected Blue Origin for a Tipping Point Award in 2018 to help increase access to planetary surfaces. Sensors and specialized software are fundamental to NASA's safe and precise landing, Integrated Capabilities Evolution, SPLICE, technology suite. This flight test, the first of two under the Tipping Point Partnership, will demonstrate the performance of two NASA-developed precision landing sensor systems, advanced algorithms, and a new computer. The rocket launch won't be the first of some spliced components, NASA's Flight Opportunities Program, based at the agency's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California, enabled tests on other commercial platforms. But this is the first integrated test for the computer, with two of the three splice sensor systems. So, before the technologies make their way to the moon or elsewhere in the solar system, NASA is taking advantage of another proven testing platform. Leading up to the new Shepard launch, NS-13, Blue Origin installed the sensors onto the upper portion of the reusable rocket booster and integrated the custom splice descent and landing computer and remaining hardware into the booster. During the approximately 12-minute venture from Earth to space and back to Earth, Splice will collect data on the range of operations for each component to help the team better understand how the elements work together, and on the same timetable, during a lunar-relevant descent and landing. John Carson, Technical Integration Manager for Precision Landing based at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, explained that Tesla's Splice technologies on a suborbital rocket expand the envelope beyond previous lab tests, helicopter field tests, and low-altitude suborbital rocket tests. He says that they will get more data about the system to anchor analysis and models and support follow-on adjustments, testing, and development. Segments of the rocket's flight profile mimic a spacecraft landing on the moon. New Shepard will lift off towards space and reach an altitude of approximately 62 miles, 100 kilometers. The splice hardware will briefly experience what it is like to operate in microgravity and the vacuum of space. Next, the capsule, carrying other cargo, including eight flight opportunities payloads and tens of thousands of postcards from Blue Origin's nonprofit club for the future, created by Artemis Generation students, will separate from the booster and fly free in space. The rocket booster will descend vertically back to Earth. The two NASA sensor systems, a computer and supporting software, will get to work during the controlled descent. The first sensor system is for terrain relative navigation that incorporates software developed by Draper of Cambridge, Massachusetts. This system kicks off an emulated landing sequence on New Shepard. Terrain relative navigation uses two proven sensors mounted into the rocket, an inertial measurement unit and camera. The software uses real-time information from the camera, its eyes, to make comparisons with preloaded surface maps to determine the rocket's exact location. The technology, which is akin to the system NASA's Perseverance rover will use to land on Mars in February 2021, could land spacecraft precisely on another world. The second sensor system to fire up during the flight test is a navigation Doppler LiDAR, developed at NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. The new sensor uses a laser to enable precise soft landings on the Moon and Mars. Navigation Doppler LiDAR sends laser beams to the surface and detects the reflected returns to determine the lander's velocity and altitude. The data from this test will let the team model how it will function during lunar landing and how it is affected by a planet's atmosphere, in this case, Earth's. The sensor data is all processed via the descent and landing computer, explained Carson. Lots of other software runs in the background, integrating the different systems, figuring out what needs to run next, and for this test, synchronizing timing with the Blue Origin flight computer. It's all crucial so the system can run autonomously and provide us with data that we can analyze post-flight. While it won't fly on this flight, a third splice sensor system called Hazard Detection LiDAR scans the surface to create a 3D map of the landing field. This data allows the splice computer and software to identify challenging terrain and determine a safe landing location for a robotic or human mission to touch down. Vice President of Advanced Development Programs of Blue Origin, Brent Sherwood, says that precision landing is critical for a sustainable lunar future that builds a lunar base with successive missions. On New Shepard, together with NASA, we are demonstrating in-flight capabilities America can use to conduct lunar exploration. 
NASA designed the elements to work together or separately. One or all of the capabilities could be integrated into a spacecraft, depending on the destination and mission requirements. We develop and test new technologies so that NASA and industry can use variations of them based on the mission needed, said game-changing development program executive Nikki Werkheiser. The program manages Splice's technology development. Since a one-size-fits-all solution for landing on other worlds isn't feasible, we are bringing about flexible, next-generation capabilities that NASA and our partners can apply to a variety of missions. Blue Origin loses legal fight over SpaceX's NASA moon contract. A federal judge rejected Jeff Bezos' latest legal attempt to overturn NASA's multi-billion dollar moon lander contract with Elon Musk's SpaceX. The decision ended a months-long battle between the space companies of two of the world's richest men that posed a significant obstacle to NASA's plans for returning humans to the moon for the first time since 1972. The ruling makes it all but certain that whenever American astronauts return to the lunar surface, they will be traveling in a spacecraft built by Mr. Musk's company. That adds another victory for SpaceX, a company that has become a dominant player in orbital spaceflight, including serving as a primary partner of NASA and carrying astronauts and cargo to the International Space Station. But NASA has been unable to work on the program with SpaceX for the duration of Blue Origin's legal challenges, which may delay the return to the moon. It's been disappointing not to be able to make progress, said Pam Melroy, NASA's deputy administrator. In an interview before the ruling was released, she added that the meeting with the company to assess the timeline for the moon mission was a very high priority for NASA. Now that the litigation ended in its favor, Blue Origin sued NASA in August 2021, contending that the agency unfairly awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract in April to conduct the first two missions to the moon. The contract feud was one of many industry conflicts that reflected the clashing ambitions of two entrepreneurs who are pouring billions of dollars into rival efforts to normalize space transportation. The launches that were the subject of the dispute are to be part of Artemis, NASA's flagship effort to build an American presence on the lunar surface. The coveted contract to put humans on the moon would have provided a crucial boost to the credibility of Blue Origin, which has flown humans to the edge of space in a tourist spacecraft, but has struggled to advance its ambitions of building a rocket that could lift cargo to orbit for NASA and the Department of Defense. After it lost to SpaceX, Mr. Bezos' company engaged in months of legal jostling, rigorous lobbying, and public complaining. The ruling by Judge Richard A. Hurtling of the U.S. Court of Federal Claims denied Blue Origin's arguments and sided with NASA and SpaceX, handing Blue Origin its second defeat after it first protested the SpaceX contract unsuccessfully to a government oversight agency earlier this year. But his full order and the rationale it offered were sealed. Whatever the judge's reasoning, Blue Origin has few other legal avenues to challenge the contract. A spokesman for Blue Origin said the company's lawsuit highlighted what is considered important safety issues in NASA's effort to award funds for a lunar lander. That must still be addressed, but added, we look forward to hearing from NASA on next steps for future moon lander competitions under the Artemis program. Blue Origin won $25 million from NASA in September in a modest lunar lander design program. A spokeswoman for NASA said the agency plans to resume work with SpaceX as soon as possible and added that more contracts for additional lunar missions will be announced next year. While SpaceX did not comment, Mr. Musk, reacting to the ruling, posted an image on Twitter referencing Judge Dredd, a dystopian science fiction comic book and film that said, You have been judged. Blue Origin had partnered with Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Draper to develop an offer its Blue Moon Lunar Lander for $5.9 billion. It had hoped that assembling a team of aerospace heavyweights would be too good for NASA to turn down. Whether Blue Origin gets a moon lander contract in the future, the company has its sights set on other goals. Recently, it announced a partnership to build a private space station, the Orbital Reef, as an eventual replacement for the International Space Station. It could be another way for Mr. Bezos to pursue the goal he said motivated the founding of Blue Origin, having millions of people living and working in space. Now that you've watched the video, let us know what you think by leaving a comment in the comment section below.